So this video is going to be about the joint design of something I've been working on for my bionic hand. But before I get into that, I just want to quickly let you all know that I've started a Discord server. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a really good place to talk about this bionic hand project and collaborate, um, as well as a good place to talk about animatronics, 3D printing and robotics. Uh, there's a link in the description and everyone's welcome, so I hope I'll see a lot of you guys over there. Another one of the important joints in the hand is known as the MCP joint, and this stands for metacarpophalangeal joint. So this is the joint between the metacarpals and the phalanges, so like the joint between the fingers and the palm of the hand. It's modelled as having two degrees of freedom, um, but the actual joint surface is like an elongated ball socket joint, which allows the fingers to move both laterally, which is side to side, and in flexion and extension. This lateral movement, as opposed to a simple hinge motion, is super important for a wide variety of grip types. In a real hand, the flexion and extension is achieved with the flexor and extensor muscles in the forearm, um, which transfer the force via tendons, but the left and right movements are created using these little muscles in the palm called lumbricals. So in my original hand design, I didn't give the MCP joint very much thought, I essentially just used the same interphalangeal joint design and stuck it on top of a lateral pivot point. So the result was fairly clunky and it didn't have any joint feedback either, which was a problem. Um, and another issue was that the metacarpals in the original design and really the palm of the hand in general had a lot of dead space, um, which I feel I could have used for actuators or something like that. Since, for this project I'm trying to stick to MG90S servos since they're so cheap and accessible and I don't really feel bad when I break one of them, I focused on trying to redesign the servo itself to be a flatter form factor and form the structure of the metacarpals in the hand. Um, so I could have just directly put MG90S servos into the palm of the hand but they wouldn't have been thin enough, you know, despite the fact that the servos are really well designed and really compact, um, they are just a little bit too tall um, for what would be ideal. So I decided to try and integrate them into the palm of the hand by sort of changing the arrangement of the gears. So here are my limitations for this design. Um, I had super limited space and I didn't really want to go wider than about 22 millimeters um, in order to keep the width of the hand and the palm uh, as low as possible. And in this joint space, there has to be two axes of motion, um, which is the lateral side to side, as I mentioned, and also the flexion and extension. But it also needs to carry control wire for two additional degrees of freedom, um, which are the joints that I designed in the last video. And then the overall uh, actuator that I'm designing, I would like it to be roughly the size of the metacarpal bones in a real hand. Um, according to my hand model and my own hand that I'm using as reference. The actuator needs to have one output for a direct drive to the lateral motion of the finger and another output which drives a pulley um, which is going to drive another joint via a cable actuation system. So I had quite a few initial designs before I came to this final design. Some of my initial designs had a straight line gear train, but by arranging them side by side I was able to make the metacarpal component shorter. Um, so note that in the original MG90S servo there are only two pivot points and the gear train alternates between the two pivot points. This configuration is really nice and space efficient, but it is also the reason that the motor has to go on the bottom which adds a lot of height to the design. Um, this makes sense for the MG90S because this additional height makes room for the circuit board, but in my design I need to minimise height as much as possible as these components will be forming my palm. The outer walls of the design are angled inwards in such a way that when all four of them connect they face inwards slightly. Um, this is similar to the arrangement in a real hand and makes all the fingers naturally oppose each other very slightly. Um, I also now have plenty of space to design a system for the thumb, which is a very complex joint and motion. The next step will be to design a component to link the phalanges to this actuator, which also needs to serve as the other axis of rotation. I also need to design a component to link these actuators together, as well as connect them to the rest of the hand. So thank you very much for watching. 
can expect many more of these sort of short frequent updates massive thank you to my patrons as always so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video